I came here to speak to my first love. I met him 14 years ago, and he later became my best friend. We wrote okay. each other letters for 10 years because we lived far away, and five years ago, we lost touch. Completely. Completely. And you were only friends? We were dating when we were in our teenage years. Young. Exactly, very young, and we were 16 years old, and then we remained friends for many years. His name is Diego. It's a very nice name. And according to you, it's someone you haven't seen in five years, but who is essential to you in life? Yes, absolutely, yes. I never forgot him. It's very hard for me to have lost contact with him. It's really painful. I don't even know how he's doing. How would you describe the kind of relationship you had before you lost touch? He was really my confidant. We would tell each other everything. We would share everything, especially since it was in writing. It allows you to express yourself even more freely. So when I would write to him, it was as if I was writing in my diary. I would really open up my heart entirely. And that's also why I really miss him. How old are you? I'm 30 years old. You're 30. And when you met, you were 16. 16. And would you say that it was an actual relationship or more of a crush and flirtatious? It was a summer fling, which at first glance should have been insignificant, but then we kept writing to each other. And how did you go from a relationship to being friends? While we lived far apart, we were young, and so we quickly came to the conclusion that it wouldn't really make sense to continue writing each other love letters. And so why did you wish for us to invite him to our show tonight? Well, to see him again. Of course. Because you have completely lost touch. <laughs> completely. You don't know where he is. The last time we talked, he told me that at the end of the year, he was leaving for Ireland. He moved, and then I moved pretty soon after that, and we haven't had any contact since. I have no idea if he's back in France now. I have no idea where he could be. So we have, of course, looked for him, and we'll talk about it in a moment, but before that, we we would like to go back on this unusual story, romance, then friendship, because we know you guys were very close before falling out of touch. Here are Sandrine and Diego. Summertime and first loves. Sandrine and Diego, teenage years, the excitement of the first dates. They met in summer camp and enjoyed their time there together. 15 years old and three weeks to spend together. We open up a little, we open up a lot, but no promises are made. Summer is over. Everyone goes home. Distance keeps them apart. One letter after another, and soon an epistolary romance begins. The words on the pages keep their love alive. They start expressing their love. Diego expresses his regrets, which Sandrine is very touched by. And the exchange continues, astounding by its longevity. They exchange letters for nine years without seeing each other again. Sandrine, the more time passes, the harder it becomes to not see you. I'm prepared to wait for as long as needed, but I know that one day our paths will meet again. I miss you. You are my comfort, a dream of love with a big L. Dreams surpass the written letters and become exchanged over the phone, their connection growing stronger and more profound, even if they never see each other. They see each other one last time, like a final goodbye. Diego is offered a job in Ireland and is considering leaving. Sandrine continues her life, moves as well, and gives birth to a little girl. But somewhere in her heart, Diego is still there, her Diego who has left. Summer dances may pass, yet one remains, the one when they met. For Sandrine, that teenage love may very well have been the love of her life. And today, this woman is tired of writing. She wants to say the words out loud. Tonight, she has a rendezvous with the love of her life. But will he be there? Wow, it's... <laughs> Photos and letters that you've shared with us so yes. that we could be here tonight together with our team that has been guiding you these last few days. Uh, just to be clear, because we've talked about friendship and love, but we know that you've had a significant love story and you've had a baby that is adorable and who we saw in your arms earlier when she was born. But that love story ended? Yes, about a year ago. So now you're single. Yes. And so what you came here to say tonight is 
that you would like to rekindle your flame with Diego? Well, first of all, I'd like to know where he is. I, yes, I don't know anything about his life. I don't know anything. He doesn't know you had a child? No, no, since it was two and a half years ago. So first, I'd like to find him. And then, if it's possible, of course, because I think it's rare to find this kind of love in one's life. And so... I don't want to let it go. So you still feel very strongly about him? Oh, yes, absolutely. For five years, you haven't tried to track him down? Even though you lost contact with him, you haven't tried to find no, him? No, I have. I did a lot of research. I searched everywhere, but his parents had moved, so I didn't have any leads. I called every person who had the same last name, so I apologized to all those people who live in the Laval region. I bothered everyone trying to find him. I couldn't find anyone from his family. And so, since I was at the end of my rope, I contacted you. Well, it's been a few weeks, right, Pascal? So tell us. Yes, we've been looking for him. We found him. We can tell you that much. We found him. And Rebecca never hesitates to go above and beyond to give those invitations for only the truth matters. And she went to Ireland. Rebecca went to Ireland to meet up with Diego. Check it out. As you know, in Only the Truth Matters, when we got an invitation to hand out, we are willing to go to the other side of the globe. Today I'm in Ireland to find Diego, and it has been no easy feast. Who wrote that line? I'll have to ask. So I'm fortunate to be in Dublin, a very colorful city, and it is not to walk in the footsteps of Oscar Wilde, but to track down Diego. It's been almost five years now that this 30-year-old man, originally from La Mayenne, has moved here. And according to the tradition, not the Irish one, but the one from Only the Truth Matters, I'm here to hand him this invitation. Excuse me? I'm looking for Diego. That's me. Hello, I'm Rebecca from Only the Truth Matters. I wanted to give you this invitation. And I hope to see you on the set of our show on Monday, if possible. Yes, of course, yes. Is that him? Yes, no doubt about it. First time you've seen him in five years? Six years even, no? <laughs> yes, five years. Yes, it's been almost five years. Why is it, in your opinion, that he also hasn't been able to or hasn't even tried to see you again? That's the thing. I don't even know if he's tried. Because for me, when I tried to find him, I realized that he had no way of finding me. Why is that? Because I moved a lot. So did my parents. And so there would have been no way to get in touch with me. My mom got remarried, changed her name and such. And so he couldn't have found me. And so I don't know. And I do wonder a lot about it. I wonder if he ever tried to find me. So Rebecca went to find him in Ireland. He responds, yes, no problem, and that he'd be on set Monday night. Is he really here with us tonight? We'll find out in just a moment. So we will ask you to stay here and remain very What we quiet. also need you to do is that when the screen turns on, since he hasn't seen you in five years, you have to be very quiet because we need to get his honest response to the surprise. Okay. We'll be right, right? back. As soon as the curtain closes, we will ask our friends in production, Gabriel Cotto, who produces the show, to put us in contact with Rebecca's Rebecca? green room. Yes. From that smile, I would assume that you are not alone in your green room. No, I am not alone, and Diego accepted our invitation. Good evening. Good evening. You arrived from Ireland this afternoon? Yes, that's right. So it's a little bit of a different experience, because you work as a travel agent, right? That's right. But this time it was you who got on the plane. This time it's me. You're feeling a little nervous? Yes, a little. And do you have any guesses of who it might be? Uh, yes, I have many, but also not one in particular that I'm certain about. All right. May I ask you to please stand? All right. The truth is at the end of this hallway, and Sam will guide you. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good evening, Diego. Good evening. I'm Pascal. This is Laurent. Good evening. Please, have, have a seat. seat. How are you? I'm good. I'm not sure if you know our show. Do you watch French TV in Ireland? No, not at all. We don't have those channels. We only have TV5. And so tell me, when did you leave France? Four years Understood. ago. Understood. So, you know the gist of it. In this show, we have people who have important things that they want to say to someone. 
And of course, these people don't reveal themselves. Right now, the person is on the other side of the curtain. You can't see them yet. No, that's true. They will appear on screen in just a moment, if you say yes. And then, depending on the offer they make, you can then choose to open the curtain or not, which is, of course, very symbolic. Pascal, is there a clue we could give them? Yes, of course. So the idea is that we tell your story to some people in the street who then have a question for you, which might guide you in the right direction. Here's the first one. Sounds good. Diego, the thing that's about to happen to you, it's a dream come true. In this case, it wasn't a question. So what would be one of your biggest dreams? If you could tell us some of your dreams in life, what would they be? A dream. Oh, wow. Traveling even more than I already do at the moment. You travel a lot? Yes, quite a bit. Right. Moving around. And then I'd also love to meet someone, of course. Are you single? Yes. All right. Should we listen to the second clue? I'd love to because it's still a bit Check vague. Diego, do you believe that the past can have a future? Diego, do you believe that the past can have a future? Can the past... That is a real clue. Yeah? Right. I mean, of course it would be someone from back when, from the past. Uh, does it have a future? Only time will tell. Good answer. Do you sometimes look back on your past? Yeah, sometimes. With joy? With nostalgia? Nostalgia? Hoping to see certain people again? Depending on what I'm thinking about, sure. We all think about the past. It's human. So, Diego, the idea of this show is that everyone is free to choose, especially the person who is invited here, without knowing exactly what awaits them. There are many steps where you can say, all right, I'm going to stop right here. I don't want to know anymore. Now is one of those steps. In a few seconds, you will know who's on the other side of the curtain. But you can also say, no, I'd rather not know who it is. So I mean, wish I traveled all the way here. Like Ulysses' journey. No, let's keep going. I will ask you to look at the screen, and we shall reveal the face of the person who has invited you here tonight. Sandrine. I thought it might be her. I thought of her. It's been a while. She can hear me. Yes, she can hear you. I know. And she can see you. Just as you see her, also on a screen. <laughs> How are you? I'm not really allowed to speak yet. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> then let's keep going, otherwise it's going to get weird. <laughs> so Sandrine is one of the people you had considered. Yes, because we did lose touch for no reason, really. When I left for Ireland, I left pretty quickly, and there are a few people I didn't contact to let them know. And Sandrine is one of those people. Has her smile always been so charming? Always, yes. Do you want to know what she came here to tell you tonight? Yes. On top of you guys meeting again because you had gotten out of touch. We had a hard time finding you. Rebecca and our team looked for you for a while until she was finally able to meet you in that bar like we just saw. So do you want to know what Sandrine came here to tell you? Sandrine, yes. the floor is yours. Well, first of all, good evening, Diego. Good evening. What I came here to tell you is that I didn't like that we've been out of touch for the last five years. I miss you a lot. It's been very hard for me not knowing if you're doing well, not knowing what's going on in your life, etc. It seems unnatural given the history we've had for 10 years. First as a beautiful love story and then as a friendship. It's hard for me to not have any news from you anymore. And so, yeah, I've looked for you everywhere. <laughs> I've looked for you everywhere, Diego, seriously. And I was at the end of my rope, so I called this show and asked for their help. And they managed to pull it off, thankfully. Because during those five years, I haven't forgotten you, and I never stopped loving you. I miss you tremendously. I thought of you, too.
So, Sandrine, a lot of things have happened to you in the last five years, right? Well, yeah, I would hope so. And when I say a lot, I mean one thing in particular that is very important. Yes, I became a mommy. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. It's been two and a half years. What gender? A little girl. Nice. Yeah. So, Sandrine, what did you really come here to ask Diego tonight? Well, if we could get back in touch and not let this happen again, because for me, those five years I've spent away from you have been hard. Like I said, I still love you, and for me, if something is still possible between us, then we shouldn't let that go, because you are essential in my life, even if we haven't seen each other for five years. It's a little ambiguous what you're saying, because, so we are clear, a few seconds ago you said that you have a little girl, so... I mean, the little girl didn't happen a few seconds ago. No, no, no. But you told us a few seconds ago, and I think it's important to add that you are single, because otherwise... Oh, yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't have come here to tell you if I was married. <laughs> no, the father and I broke up about a year ago. So, yeah. yeah. Diego, have you thought of Sandrine during those five years? I'm assuming you have, every now and then, since you had such a strong bond. Did you ever try to track her down, since she moved and so did you? No, I left on a whim, like I said. I didn't take time to give everyone my address, and then, you know, you feel guilty. You think of people and you think, oh, it's a shame, it was silly of me, I should have, but... The more time passes. Exactly. Then you feel silly trying to reach out, or you're afraid to, and at some point I even thought it'd be hard for me to find her, just like it must have been hard for her to try to track me down. So, I thought of it, but I never really tried. Diego, I will ask you to stand. We have a little ceremony on this show. You get to stand in front of the curtain. And this curtain is very symbolic, as I'm sure you've understood. You can open it, or you can choose to leave it closed. On this show, it regularly happens that people choose to leave it closed. And it doesn't mean that they're unpleasant or a coward. It's simply a choice. And that choice only counts for tonight, of course. Sandrine is asking you to stop being miles and light years away from her, so you can either calmly go back to Ireland, the way you came, tomorrow morning, or you can open this curtain right now. What do you decide? Like I said, I always regretted leaving like I did and never seeing her again, so no, let's open that curtain. Open it up. Come on, quickly now. I missed you. <laughs> All right, how are you feeling? I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I hope that if we don't see each other for five years, you'll miss me just as much. Of course I would. <laughs> We are very, very happy to have been able to contribute to this reunion because with the resources we have at our disposal to help those who call upon us, it sometimes enables us to find people who live more or less far away who had disappeared. But then, of course, it's your life, it's your choice to do as you please with this reunion. In any case, lovers or friends, you look very beautiful Thank together. Thank you. You'll have many things to tell each other in English and French. We're going to let you catch up. <laughs>